right, so uh, thank you uh, being here in this session and having interest in our presentations. I'll be talking about a work in progress that we started with Patricia for the last two months, uh, to be honest, so it's quite preliminary and I'm looking forward to hear your feedbacks, questions, uh, whatever you have in your mind. And that said, uh, I should also, um, as you realize from the time limitation we have, I'll be quite quick for the literature report and for the technical details uh, about the, uh, the empirical analysis. So in case you have any questions, um, something you, you know, wonder, please come and uh, ask me. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, explain. All right. So. The pre as you understand from the uh, title of the presentation, I'll be talking about the case of Syrian refugees in Turkey, and I'll be trying to uh, basically show you how the exposure to refugees is changing the ethnic polarization that had or the exis existed in Turkey between Kurdish and Turkish population. And then I'll try to understand uh, if there's any change, what are the potential mechanisms so that we can just try to find a way to decrease ethnic polarization, which is an important barrier for um, conflict, as you know from the literature. So I, as I said, I'll be quick on the uh, presentations. I uh, start directly with my research questions. And first, as I explained, I'll be trying to find the net impact of refugee population in Turkey on ethnic polarization. And then I'll try to see if there are any impact on the terrorist attacks. All right, so as you know from the link between immigration and terrorism conflict, uh, basically the top, of the, uh, top on the agenda, we have the securitization of migration issue. And linking with the refugees, particularly after 2015, what is so-called the uh, refugee crisis in Europe, this is also what we had seen uh, in the discussions uh, in the public arena. So um, I put here some quotations from the speech of Greek defense minister and Italian foreign minister. And as you see, the common team is really um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the link between refugees or the potential refugees being uh, a diffusion, uh, uh, transmitting terrorism actually uh, to Europe. And, uh, you know, th there are different uh, mechanisms that are suggested in the literature why this could be the case. And one is focusing on the diffusion of policies, ideologies, and behavior. The second one is uh, it's focusing on the, the special network. Uh, and then the thirdly, there, there is a channel suggested in the literature that the you know, conflict is actually in itself spilling over uh, through the refugee inflows. But all these previous literature, uh, you know, so much focus on the immigration issue because the focus was more on the terrorist, uh, terrorism attacks in developing uh, countries. And uh, the, the idea of the, you know, the, those papers mainly is to try to understand how immigration is really linked with this uh, problem. When we look at the uh, association between refugees and terrorism in the literature, we see that there, the papers are usually around three main uh, issues. The first one is the attacks itself on refugee camps, terrorists uh, recruiting from refugee camps themselves. And then thirdly, the incentives, high incentives of the right-wing anti-immigrant groups attacking refugees. Uh, so the paper that I will be presenting today is, uh, we will be looking at the picture from the other side of the issue, actually. So I'll be trying to understand how refugees itself indirectly affects the terrorism through ethnic polarization. So when I define ethnic polarization, actually I define the, um, I use the definition of uh, Esteban and Ray uh, in their 1994 paper. So I'm using it as an interaction of between group identity and across group alienation. And as you know from the literature also quickly, I I'll just want to mention that uh, it is not the ethnic fractionalization, but ethnic polarization that's been uh, found to be a pr predictor of the civil conflict. And uh, importantly, which is also very much related with the Turkish case, it's been found that higher level of ethnic conflict 
will exist if a large ethnic minority, which in the Turkish case is the Kurds here, faces an ethnic majority. So this is very much suiting the picture here I will be presenting here today. And also the Turkish case is a bit distinct from what we have seen in the literature because uh, in the literature, the refugee flows and migration flows, when we see them, uh, the refugee flows are usually smaller in smaller scope in the developed world. And as you know from the you know, total uh, refugee population, only around 13% of them are hosted in developed countries. So um, almost 90% of them are in developing low and middle income countries. And uh, it is more a temporary issue. And for the migration flows, it is more in larger scope and more permanent. So that's why literature is focusing more on this actual issue, linking terrorism with migration. So that for the Turkish case, it is this thing I suggest because uh, the Turkish case is, uh, first of all, currently now the country is hosting the largest uh, refugee population, but also it is uh, presenting us a protracted stay of refugees. After 2011, now more than 10 years passed, and we have almost 4 million registered uh, Syrian refugees in Turkey. And also, on top of that, uh, Turkey is situated in the middle of several conflict zones. So the turmoil in Iraq and Syria have some explored challenges, as been suggested in the literature. And also, we know from the literature that the degree of terrorist attacks does indeed cluster in space. So uh, Turkey has a disadvantaged position in that regard. And related with the Syrian crisis, uh, Turkey has 911 kilometer long border with Syria. So um, I mean, you, you can imagine how it's been not only affected by the huge influx of refugees, but also the conflict directly there. And needless to say, uh, Turkish army entering Syria in the later years of the conflict itself. And for um, starting from 1980s, actually in, uh, after 1984, we have also uh, you know a Kurdish insurgency in Turkey. So uh, th this is a continued uh, problem in Turkey. However. In the similar period with the Syrian refugee inflows in Turkey, uh, starting uh, actually in 2009, but uh, let's say more after 2011 till 2015, we had a peace process in Turkey. So between PKK and the AKP government. And uh, the focus of the paper today I'll be presenting will be focusing on the part that is uh, f focusing on the peace process period and we will be extending the analysis for the later periods. So just a quick uh, overview of what, what, what happened to you know, the overall uh, intensity of terrorism in Turkey so far across years. Uh, we see that there's ups and downs, but the peaks are usually around 1990s and also uh, until 2015, uh, even if during the peace process, as you see, there's an increase. And uh, this is the Turkish map and then you see that, uh, sorry, so over here, if I can use the pointer, yeah, great. So this is actually the Syrian border over here and the intensity of the, uh, you know, the, the attacks, ter ter terrorist attacks are mainly on the Syrian and uh, Iraq border. And for the Syrian refugee population, um, we had Syrian refugees coming in Turkey after 2011 May, but Particularly after 2013, actually, we see a, uh, a quite sh uh, jump in the uh, number of pop uh, uh, Syrian refugee population. However, as you see from the uh, map here, after 2016, the share of Syrian refugees across provinces is almost similar. And when you compare Syrian refugees with natives, you see that uh, the refugees in Turkey are lower, have lower education levels. So this is. Uh, I'm trying to show, uh, you know, th that will help you to interpret the findings actually. And it's more a male and uh, a single population, which is important. All right, so what is the net impact then? After presenting all this uh, background, what is the net impact of refugee population or exposure to refugees on ethnic polarization in Turkey? 
So I'm not, as I said, I'm not going into the details of technical uh, empirical issues here, but when you compare uh, the treatment and the comparison group um, in my uh, difference and differences analysis in this first part, you see that actually after 2012 with the refugees um, being more visible in uh, different provinces in Turkey, uh, actually for the treatment region, uh, we see an increase in the ethnic polarization level, but for the control group, it, it, it keeps decreasing through uh, periods. And uh, when we see if this is really a different, I mean, if the effect is different for different ethnic groups, I uh, repeated the analysis for Turks and for Kurds only uh, in the sample. It seems that it's not for the Turkish people, for the Turkish people, but for Kurds actually, it increased like, ethnic polarization. So what could be the reason? This is also important to understand. So Kurds somehow, you know, uh, after uh, being exposed to refugees, Syrian refugees, they started to have uh, more ethnic polarization. So although it's not studied so far in our paper, there is one suggestion in the literature that was focusing on the impact of Syrian refugees on the labor market, uh, which is, I think, relevant, and we will uh, delve into that area uh, after this presentation, which is the impact of refugees on labor markets. So the findings show that there is small but negative neg labor market impact for the informal workers and for women. And there are also some papers showing that Kurds are mainly in those you know, informal uh, jobs. So we can uh, say that maybe one channel is through the negative impact, labor market impact of refugees. And then the other channel, what it could be, we just checked, maybe they directly also affected by the Syrian refugee exposure through some increase in the terrorist attacks. So as you see here, the, uh, you can't see probably, but on the uh, yeah, left side here, these are the not three level uh, regions in Turkey, provinces namely. And here I'm trying to show you that actually the share of Syrian refugees, as you see, it's very different uh, for you know, across provinces. So uh, there's a heterogeneity in terms of the uh, treatment intensity, if we say that you know, the refugee exposure is a treatment. So, therefore, I use instrumental variables regression, and from there, I try to understand the impact of refugee exposure on the total terror attacks, then the attacks that are done by PKK, the, you know, uh, the, the, the Kurdish side, and then the other uh, groups. Uh, uh, by the way, the data I use is not the global terrorism database. Uh, I think in that sense we are more advantages because in the global terrorism database uh, we have information, terrorist attacks, uh, information that are captured in the news. Uh, so uh, if there is a small attack or if there's no casualty, so maybe uh, the, the attack is not reported and not in the global terrorism database, but we got the data from the... Uh, but... Uh, Okay. You're, you're out of time, I'm so if possible, just wrap it up. Sorry. Only, only okay. because your, your presentation is, is, is riveting. But we done. could explore that with the, with the question and answer. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't see. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I was just concluding, actually. So um, what I suggest here is that then the ethnic polarization is actually increased even in the peace process, and the impact was on the Kurdish population. The important channel that we studied was through terror attacks. Uh, on Kurds mainly, I'll maybe go, go over it during QA session. And uh, yeah, we, we believe that the resilience of Kurdish population should be supported to have the peace process. And there is some to follow up. So if you are curious about the research, please uh, stop by. Thank you.